<laughs> I've been using an iPhone 14 Pro Max for the past week. It started with the purple version that Apple let me borrow, and more importantly, it continued with the silver model that I bought myself. So how has it held up? Let's find out. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, iFixit. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is probably the strangest phone that I've used in the space of time that I've been making videos about phones on the internet. It's not strange in a vacuum. In a vacuum, this is a perfectly usable, borderline futuristic device that does things that I still don't fully comprehend. But as we don't live in a vacuum, least of all an iPhone shaped one, this phone has taken more time to get comfortable with than the iPhone 12 or 13 Pro Maxes that I started using when I made the leap to big phones about two years ago. But before we dive into all of those things that have confunded me, let's quickly cover the specs and ordering options in case this is your, yes you, your very first iPhone 14 Pro Pro Max video. The base model Pro Max comes in at the same price as the 13 Pro Max, which was $1099. For this money, you'll get the latest A16 processor, 128 gigabytes of storage, a 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR display, and beefy all day battery life. You can take this up to a very impressive one terabyte of storage for $1599, but personally for me, $500 for one terabyte of storage, that's too steep of a hurdle to leap. Sure, I guess if you were using this phone professionally as your professional camera, either with the big 48 megapixel files, which we'll talk more about later, or if you're shooting raw video, then sure, I guess get that then. But half again as much money doesn't make sense to me for regular folks, and I would consider myself a power user, and I barely even use 128 gigabytes of storage for me. I think that is the perfect amount. Not only do you get a choice of storage options when you buy the 14 Pro Max, but you also get four color options. Deep purple, space black, silver, and gold. Which, I'm not sure why they offer for, objectively speaking, silver is the right option. I mean, it really is, and when you get it, you'll thank me later. Now that we have the tech talker equivalent of doing our taxes out of the way, let's get to the point of what I've liked and what I've disliked over the past week. Now the twist this time around, I did say this was a confusing device, is there are a lot of new features this year, and a lot of those features are gonna have things that I both like and dislike about them. Normally, it's easier to segment these things, but with the 14 Pro Max, things are blurrier. Let's start off with the screen brightness. Holy crap, can this screen get bright? It gets so bright that it totally overexposed my camera during the unboxing video without really trying to. On the one hand, yes, this is amazing. You can easily see the screen in even the most difficult of lighting situations. Generally, the fiercest screen challenge is trying to see my screen when I'm running on a bright sunny day. When you've got the screen that only goes up to 500 nits of brightness and you're running, good luck being able to actually see anything on it. But the new Pro Max gets so bright that you can clearly distinguish even minute features or functions even when the sun is doing its best to obscure your eyes. However, moving over to the the more iffy side of this functionality, you need to be seriously careful with this at night. I say you need to be careful with this in kind of an ominous sense, because the first night of use while browsing Twitter for my bed, I moved over to increase the brightness a little, and it moved way more aggressive than I've ever had on a previous iPhone before, and it, and it like legitimately gave me a brightness shock. If you're using this at night, this can seriously compromise your night vision. I mean, it's great that the screen can be that bright, but with great power comes great micromanagement of the brightness dial. You can't just go full bore all the time if you don't actually need it. But maybe you don't wanna buy a new iPhone 14 Pro Max. Let's say you have an older phone that you don't really want or have the money to upgrade. Chances are it's hanging in really well, but you might need a new battery to keep up after all the charge cycles it's gone through. That's where today's sponsor, iFixit, can really come in and save you a ton of money. Let's take the last version of the iPhone SE from 2020, for example. It's a fantastic budget phone, but probably has a ton of cycles on it by now. They have kits on their website today that will allow you to buy a brand new battery with all of the tools required to swap that battery out. iFixit's all-in-one fix kits have the high quality parts and tools that you need to fix your iPhone, laptops, game consoles like Nintendo Switch, even smartwatches. Combined with their free step-by-step -step repair guides, you'll have everything you need to do battery swaps, SSD upgrades, and more. Find your fix at the link below and use code EVERYDAYDAD to start fixing stuff today. Sticking with the display, the 14 Pro Max is also the first iPhone with an optional always-on display. Essentially, when you lock the phone, iOS will sort of dim the screen, but still show notifications, time, and other customizable thing on the display all the time. I've seen conflicting reports on this function's effect on battery life, but personally, I've never really noticed a major difference with it on 
or with it off. I do think this is a neat feature that over time I will get used to and it will be nice to have an easier way to check my notifications without actually having to touch or turn on my phone. But I do a lot of that on my Apple Watch and again on the iffy side of this specific functionality, I still haven't quite gotten used to this. I mean, think about it. My iPhone has trained me over the past few years that if the screen is on, something caused it to activate, whether that be a call, text, email, etc. Maybe it's just me, but those years of training my brain haven't been able to be reworked in the past few days. So my phone kind of distracts me constantly because when I notice the display in my peripheral vision, it triggers something in my brain that I've gotten a notification and I need to do something. More often than not, I don't need to do anything. And again, I'm sure I'll get used to this, but so far, it still gets me a week later. Next up, we're still on the display. There's a lot that happened with the display this year. The 14 and the 14 Pro Max no longer have a traditional, well, traditional in the iPhone sense, notch on the top to house the camera and the face ID sensor. This time around, we've got the dynamic island where you'll have to watch closely and see who actually gets the rose and who gets voted off in the next episode. Seriously though, the Dynamic Island is an attempt to take a hardware limitation and figure out a software solution and innovate on that to do something with this normally empty space. I think the island itself is a pretty smart feature and you see it active a lot, which makes it feel, I mean really, immediately in starting to use this phone, the Dynamic Island feels like a natural part of the operating system. But my brain still notices the island a lot. Normally when I'm using my cell phone, I literally never notice the notch because there's no reason to. It's just dead space and your brain can just stop thinking about it as usable space. However, iOS 16 continuously draws attention to the island, whether through having it become a sort of notification hub or little animations that happen almost any time you do something on this device. I mean, those animations are absolutely neat and they sell the idea of the island, but you look at it a lot more now. Plus, I think that little bit of space between the island and the top of the phone also draws attention much more now than when it was just a notch. I personally don't hate it. Again, I think it's a very neat, innovative solution. But this is probably gonna be the most subjective thing about the new phone. If you hated notches, I think you'll hate this even more because of how much attention gets brought to it. But if you didn't mind notches, I bet you'll be able to accept this before too long. For the rest of the display, it's a lot like the 13 Pro Max. ProMotion is amazing and I love it. The image is crisp and clear and it feels just like a smooth, nimble device that just so happens to be the size of two iPhone 4s taped together. From here on out, we can get to more stable ground of easier to like and dislike features. Next up, I really like the new camera system installed in the 14 Pro Max. I have seen some folks have issues with it online, but so far it's been great for me. The main thing I like and want to focus on today is not necessarily the 48 megapixel main camera. Many other folks either have or will have dedicated charts and tests to show how far you can push this camera. I would recommend my friend iPhoneDo if you want to see really in-depth camera comparisons. But what I want to talk about today is how much I've liked the new 50-ish millimeter crop on that main camera. Because this is a quad pixel array, Apple is able to take the standard wide angle 24 millimeter picture at 48 megapixels and perfectly crop it into 50-ish millimeter equivalent picture for 12 megapixels. Now, I don't wanna get into a full on class on focal lengths today or megapixels, but suffice to say, 50 millimeters is incredibly popular for photographs because it's the closest approximation to human eyesight in the photography world. Another benefit is while those big 24 millimeter shots will take up a ton of storage because that 48 megapixels is a ton of megapixels. The more standard pictures, because they're cropping in, they won't take up nearly as much space. Plus, these pictures look great. I've been able to snap a few around the house and even got a picture of a snake in my backyard while I was out mowing. I think Apple continues to have excellent cameras on their phones that I have no problems using instead of bringing along a much bigger quote unquote real camera. I literally never take my cameras anywhere anymore. This is my family camera. The sport mode has also been pretty amazing to see. Essentially, it's like having a GoPro stabilization system built into your phone. You can see here with me running, I'm not trying to stabilize the phone at all. It's doing all of that itself. Apple says this could easily replace a gimbal for you, and maybe it can if you are doing all of your recording outside, but the way they achieve this effect Effect is by cropping in on a 4K image and doing a lot of data analysis to smooth those shots out. The reason I say you need to be outside for this to work properly is because these kind of systems need a lot of data to stabilize and that means you'll need a fairly fast shutter speed. And if you're getting a usable image with a fairly fast shutter speed, you need a ton of light. So if you are indoors, you'll find that you get a light error often. For family stuff, I think this will be the camera to use if you found that you don't like how shaky your video is when recording soccer games or birthday parties. 
it's really great. Cinematic mode also got a bit of an upgrade too, going from 1080p 30 frames per second last year with, at its max to 4K 24 and 4K 30 frames per second. I found in my small test that it still has some edge detection problems. I'd really like to see Apple get the LiDAR scanner involved in this depth information discussion on the phone. I think with the horsepower of the processor, this would be able to give us real-time depth mapping, which should allow for perfectly separated foregrounds and backgrounds. But I have literally no idea how that would actually work. I'm more on the idea side of the equation. It's up to the developers to make that dream a reality. The front-facing camera also looks fantastic, and honestly, I think the front-facing camera has the better overall image quality if you're looking for video. Something about the rear camera this year for me for video feels way overly digital sharpened, and it feels like the skin tones are off a little bit with a little too much saturation. I do have to tweak them a little in my video editing software to get it to look how I want it. However, the front-facing camera looks really good. I think the skin tones look better, and it's not as overly sharp as the rear camera. Yes, you'll lose out on some cool features of the back camera, but it's more about the image quality and how skin tones look look, and I'm impressed with what you get here. Build quality feels pretty much identical to the 13 lineup, with the only exception being that the camera bump is substantially bigger this year. When you see the specs, a couple of millimeters sounds like it's not that much of a difference, but when you see it in person, it's fairly darn big. Plus, that means you'll need a new case this year if you want to make sure your cameras don't get scratched, and I have to say that this Apple Umbra leather case with the silver iPhone, this is my hands down favorite phone case combination of all time, and nobody paid me to say that or gave me either of these items. This just looks darn good. As far as negatives go, I don't personally have anything really specific here. There's nothing about the 14 Pro Max that I dislike that couldn't be extrapolated out to all iPhones. I think this is overall a really great phone. Would I recommend the iPhone 14 Pro Max? If you have an iPhone 11 or prior phone, Yes, this would be a huge upgrade. It's got power, amazing cameras, great safety features, a beautiful display, and so much battery life that you just don't need to think about it. If you have a 12 Pro Max, maybe it's worth the upgrade. Like if your iPhone 12 just isn't jamming for you anymore, maybe it's broken or you just need an upgrade, maybe the battery health is significantly down, or you don't like the color, then sure, I could recommend upgrading. If you have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, I really wouldn't recommend upgrading. Sure, this has some really cool stuff, but nothing is earth shattering or must buy features. There's some great stuff here, but it's not worth the year over year upgrade. Even Apple themselves are clearly in the upgrade every four to five years product development cycle. You get iterations every year. You don't get revolutions, you get evolutions. And if you like this video, click here to see my favorite accessories for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.